I think most of us would agree that his heart has always been in the right place. Some may not agree with some of the policies he's had to support. Sometimes those are forced on elected officials, whether they like them or not, economic times being sometimes what they are. But he's always served honorably and well, and he's always been the most welcome speaker when he comes to our club. And we're delighted to have him here again today, delighted to have one of his sons here with us today, our governor, Governor Steve Bashir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm going to join. <laughs> I haven't had that good a welcome in a while, I know. <laughs> Thanks. I really appreciate the kind introduction and the greeting. And I understand I don't have to introduce Andy. He's already been introduced. You know, I, I get here periodically as governor. I get here just as often as father and granddad. I've got two grandchildren here, ages four and three, and so Andy and Brittany get to see Jane and my smiling faces quite a bit because uh, we thoroughly enjoy that. You know, most of the time when I go someplace for an event, I'm going because we're cutting a ribbon on some completed project or we're announcing some new jobs. Uh, we're telling about some additional infrastructure that we will be building. But today, I would like to sort of step back and talk about some of the larger challenges that are facing Kentucky, what we have been and what we hope to do to address those challenges. I've been governor now for about five and a half years. And during that time, I think you could sort of organize my priorities around three big goals. First of all, restoring people's faith in state government by taking better care of both the trust and the taxpayer money that are placed in our hands. Secondly, bringing this state out of a global economic recession whose impact has been felt in every corner of society and of Kentucky. And thirdly, finding ways in the worst economic time of my life and probably your life to continue to invest in the core infrastructure of our state. And by that, I don't really mean <coughs> As great as it is, things like the Ohio River Bridges Project and other physical infrastructure projects that we are having some great success on around this state, I'm talking about people infrastructure, our intellectual infrastructure for our state. Because for us to attack the fundamental issues that continue to hold us back in various ways, it is extremely important that we take that people infrastructure and build it and change it significantly. The first goal, restoring trust in our government in various ways. Obviously, one of the first things we did when I became governor was to put in a strong, strict ethics policy to make sure that all of us, including myself, conducted ourselves in a way that would engender and build again some trust in government from the people of our state. We also improve, improve the way that we dealt with your dollars, your tax dollars. And we did that in three different ways. First of all, we cut. You know, during this economic recession, we were like everybody else. We had to sit down at night at the dinner table and figure out how to pay for this and what to do for that and what our priorities were. We reduced our budget 13 times over the last five and a half years. We cut over $1.6 billion in spending during those 13 times. And we have reduced the size of the state workforce to the smallest that it's been in about 20 years. Secondly, we improved. 
we became more efficient. We figured out how to do things better with less money. And thirdly, we figured out how to work outside the box and to do things differently. We made some revolutionary changes in government. We took our Medicaid program, for instance, and moved it to the managed care model, and we brought in the private sector to work with us to implement that huge revolutionary change. We reined in the benefits of the public pension system, and we grabbed a hold of that unfunded liability that was one of the worst in the country, and as a result of what we did in the last session of the General Assembly, we now have that under control and we are going to have a financially stable, under control public pension system now for years to come. We reformed our correction system in various ways. And quite honestly, we've been so successful in that that we now have four fewer prisons that we operate than when I came into office. And any of you that follow state government and state government budgets know that some of the biggest drains on our money are the correction system and the Medicaid system, those big hunks of money that flow out of government. And we have made some significant changes in controlling that spending, and we're going to continue to do so. The second overall, overall goal that I mentioned, turning this economy around, has been a slow but a steady process. And there are signs of progress all across this state. For instance, despite a recent uptick, our unemployment rate now for the last two years has dropped and will continue to drop, I predict, over the next two to three years. Our exports continue to grow, and as a matter of fact, just this last year, we set a new record in Kentucky for exports to other countries around the world. Our automobile industry is number three in the country right now. Some of you may not realize that, but we are third in terms of the number of cars and light trucks produced in the United States. And I'll predict to you that before the end of this year, we're going to be second. I think we're going to be able to move ahead of Ohio and be in second place, second only to Detroit and Michigan where the whole thing started. We're also seeing an aggressive influx of foreign direct investment. We've spent a lot of time around this world seeking jobs for Kentuckians. And it's happening, it's working. You've seen it here in the Louisville area. Uh, we just brought an Indian manufacturing company to Elizabethtown. Uh, we've been, had success, obviously, in Japan. We've had that success for years. China, France, Germany. You name it, we've almost been there, and, and it's working. We are, we are setting records now in foreign direct investment for Kentucky. And then back in 2009, we totally revised all of our economic incentive programs in Kentucky. And because of that, we have been very successful in creating jobs, not only by attracting new companies to come to Kentucky from other places, but by working with our existing companies to expand and grow. You've seen some big examples here in Louisville with what we've done with Ford, what we've done with GE in terms of repatriating jobs from overseas. Lots of things are going on here. Hundreds of new projects, billions of dollars in new investments, thousands of new jobs that are being created. But while we've been successful, at recruiting new businesses, there's still a fundamental weakness in Kentucky's resume. You know, everybody, when we talk to them, wants lower taxes. Everybody wants and appreciates tax incentives. They want good roads. They want logistical support. They want nearby airports. They want low energy costs. But let me tell you, in virtually every conversation, that we have with any CEO of any company, whether they're already here or whether we're attracting them here. The most important thing to them is not all of those things I've just mentioned to you. It's a quality workforce. It's an educated workforce. It's a healthy workforce. That is the most important thing that a CEO 
of any company tells us they need. They need people that can do the work that they need done to be successful. A trained, an educated, an energetic, a talented, and a drug-free workforce. So that third priority, building our people infrastructure, is an all-important priority for us and our future. I could state the vision that I have for the future of this state in pretty simple terms. I want to create a Kentucky, and I know, I know you agree with this, we want to create a Kentucky where every child, no matter what circumstances they're born into, what economic status that they may have, that every child has the opportunity to be successful, that every child has an opportunity to get a good start in life, to get a good education, and to become an adult in a state where they can live, they can work, and they can raise a family and have a great quality of life. And while we've made a lot of progress, we're not there yet. Too many Kentucky kids still get a poor start in life. Too many children enter school with preventable health problems, with undeveloped minds, with really no sense of curiosity or engagement in the world around them. So we've taken some steps during the last five and a half years. First, we ramped up our K-CHIP program, and we have provided health insurance for 60,000 uninsured kids to make sure that we can give those kids a healthier start in life. We've greatly expanded dental care in poor areas, and as some of you know, we're, we don't rank very well in a lot of in many parts of our state on dental care for our people. We continue to implement a program whose goal is to make every child kindergarten ready as they get ready to come into kindergarten by working with both the public and the private sector of preschool programs. So getting our children off to a healthier start in life is step one of improving our people infrastructure. Step two is improving our K through 12 school system so that every kid who graduates is prepared to go into this 21st century into this economy and compete. That means tougher classes. That means keeping kids in school. In the last five years, and I know that you all are interested in this because I know education is really a top priority of the Rotary Club. In the last five years, Kentucky is on the leading edge of education reform in this country. Why do I say that? Well, we were the first state, folks, the first state to adopt the aligned, rigorous, and internationally benchmarked Common Core academic standards. Number one, we have led the way. We've also changed our testing system to make our schools more accountable for student learning. We've also ramped up our career and technical programs, recognizing that four-year university path is not the only route for everybody. And recently, I'm happy to say, we changed the law to keep students from sabotaging their careers by dropping out of high school and not getting a high school diploma. You know, the First Lady and I worked for five years trying to raise our dropout age from 16 years of age, where it has been since 1920, to 18 years of age because of the importance of educating our kids and making sure they stay in school. Finally, this last session, we were able to get a bill passed. It wasn't everything that we wanted, but the bill said, okay, school districts can voluntarily step up and adopt a policy of raising the dropout age in their district to 18. And when 55% of our school districts, or 96 out of the 174 districts, adopt that policy voluntarily, then it will, over a period of about the next three or four years, become mandatory across Kentucky. Well, that law became effective June the 25th. In two weeks, we hit that goal. Two weeks, we went over 96. 
Matter of fact, we're now at 110. And that tells me something. That tells me that our educational establishment in this state understands the importance of our kids remaining in school, understands the importance long term of these children not only getting a high school diploma, but moving on and getting the skills, the extra skills that they need in one way or the other to compete in this economy. So lots of good things happening. And I have some other good news for you from some national surveys that have come out just this year. In one of them, new national statistics show that our graduation rate improved from 63.7% for the class of 2000 to 77.2 percent for the class of 2010. That's one of the biggest improvements in the entire country. Secondly, the national publication Education Week in its annual what they call Quality Counts survey and report. This year, Kentucky ranked number 10 in the country for school achievement and progress. That's up from 34th in just two years. Moving 24 spots in two years is a stunning improvement for our systems and says so much about all of the education community that's involved in that effort. Now that third priority I mentioned to you to improve our people infrastructure is to improve the health of our population. Folks, we rank at the bottom or near the bottom in almost every health statistic you bring up cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, cancer, cancer deaths, you name it, we don't look good in it. And this hasn't just happened in the last year or two, this has been chronic in our state for decades. That's unacceptable and that holds us back. So we've taken some steps. We have improved colon cancer screenings. We've expanded access to substance abuse treatment and smoking cessation programs. We've helped more seniors access prescription drugs. We have cracked down on prescription drug abuse. We are running pain clinics, pain pill clinics out of the state. And we are making tremendous progress on prescription drug abuse. But those are small steps and this year, I made two decisions, and these may be some decisions that you mentioned that uh, not all of us would agree with, but to me, they will make more of a difference in Kentucky for the next generation. These are transformational decisions. If we can improve significantly the health of our people, then there is no limit to what this state can do. The two decisions I mentioned is number one, as you all know, the Affordable Care Act is law, and it requires every state to have a health benefits exchange. I decided that we were going to establish our own. The reason I decided that was because the Kentucky Chamber, the Hospital Association, the providers, the health care advocates all said to me, you know, if we're going to have one of these, we need to run our own exchange. And I agreed with them. And so we are establishing that ex exchange. We're ahead of schedule. We're going to have it up and running. We've got our website up now. And we're, ours are, is going to work, and it is going to provide a marketplace, which is what the website is and what the exchange is, a marketplace for individuals and small business to go in and to shop for health insurance. The second decision I made was, again, under the Affordable Care Act, and that was to expand our Medicaid program. We have, folks, 640,000 uninsured Kentuckians in our state. The expansion of the Medicaid program will cover 308,000 of the 640,000. The existence of the health benefit exchange and the fact that there are premium subsidies for low-income individuals will apply to all but about 50,000 of the rest of those 640,000 Kentuckians. For the first time in Kentucky's history, we're going to be able to say that every Kentuckian will have the opportunity to have affordable health insurance. Now, I know that some of this is controversial, and I didn't make this decision in a vacuum. 
And I didn't make it just because my heart was in the right place, although I hope it is. This was an economic decision as well as a health decision. Before I made that decision, I got the University of Louisville's Urban Institute and PricewaterhouseCoopers to do a study. And they spent about six months looking at this Medicaid expansion to see whether it made sense for us, economic sense for us. And they came back to me and said, Governor, quite honestly, you'd be crazy not to. Number one, the federal government is going to pay for the whole cost of it for the first three years. And then for the next five years, as they phase in your part of it, you end up paying about 10% and the federal government pays 90%. Number two, under the rules, if you find out down the road that it's not working or it's not affordable for any reason, you can pull out of it. The rules allow you to end your participation in it. Number three, if you do this over the next eight years, you'll see 17,000 new jobs created in Kentucky to provide all of the health care that's going to be needed and then ancillary jobs branching off of that. Number four, you will see a $15.6 billion positive economic impact for this state. When I looked at that and I looked at our health statistics, that's why I made that decision. And I think it's the right decision for the long run in Kentucky. I know that there's going to be bumps in the road uh, along the way trying to implement the Affordable Care Act and all of the different things that are coming. It's new. It's different. And change is always scary. But I'll tell you what, the way we've operated for the last 50 years hadn't made a whit of difference in those horrible health statistics. And I'm certainly hopeful that having every Kentuckian with affordable health insurance over the next generation can make a substantial difference. And if it does, it's not only good for that individual, it's good for our economy because a healthier workforce is going to make us so much more attractive, not only for new jobs, but in your business with absenteeism and everything else that we deal with right now. So. Lots of things going on. Uh, let me just end with, with this. We have been able to do this and a lot of, lot of things that I've talked about and other things because we operate differently here in Kentucky. We actually, over in the legislature and them working with me, try to act like adults. That's a novel idea, I know. <laughs> but that's the way we've operated. With President Stivers in the Senate, who's a Republican, with Speaker Stumbo in the House, who's a Democrat, you know, we all realize that we're Kentuckians first and we're Democrats and Republicans second. And I know political season is almost always on us, but you ought to be able as adults to separate elections and governing. You ought to be able as adults to sit down and do what the people elect you to do, and that is to try to work through your differences with some end result in mind and move this state and move this country forward. You know, if Washington, D.C. could take a, a lesson from the way we do things here in Kentucky, I think you'd see this country in a lot better shape than what it is. So I'm excited about my last two and a half years because I think that there is no way but up for us. We're coming out of the recession. Things are getting much better economically and we've got lots of great things going for us, particularly the fact that we know how to work together. Thank you all very much for having me.